funny how memories attach themselves to things. It could be a distinct smell, a beautiful view, or even the bite of an apple. Ah, uh, yes, now I remember. It's the heart and soul of Kavai that wanders through my mind. I arrived early morning to try to make the best of my time. And even then, the city was busy and full of life. I wandered the streets, trying to take in as much as I could. The farmer's market was full of fresh crops, but also with generous people. The man I encountered welcomed me to town and offered me an apple as a kind of gesture. Yosef was his name. Thank you, Yosef. There were so many people and everyone with a story to tell. If only I had the time to dig a little deeper. Then I walked to the center and I remember the Kubelia Mosque, originally built by the Ottoman Empire in 1735, but destroyed during communism because practicing religion was forbidden. Eventually, after the fall of the communist system, it was rebuilt, and the new one you're seeing is a very distinct building, with Byzantine columns and Arabian arcs that stand out out of all other architecture in Kabai. The other thing that stood out, the clock tower. It was built during the 19th century at the highest point of the city, which back then dominated the scenery of it. It has been built with pumice stones and has carvings. The inside, there are wooden stairs and there is also a sundial at the top, which used to synchronize with the sound bell. Now it doesn't work anymore, but still the building itself is a sight to see. I then went to the Ethnographic Museum. This is how a typical civil building in Kavai used to look like. It was built between the end of the 18th century by the Arcajio family. The building has gone through some stages of construction during the family's expansion and stay. But in 1971, it was turned into today's ethnographic museum, filled with various objects and folkloristic clothes and various periods of time. Albanians are known for their hospitality, so I wasn't surprised with how friendly people were when I asked them for help. And I was hungry, so I asked one guy for a place to eat, and he suggested me Pocheria Aviator. Pocheria Aviator pays respect to the old pottery factory known in Kavai. It's one of the most unique restaurants in terms of its space and architecture. Let's say it has a traditional and at the same time industrial design 
which makes it unique and welcoming. And the food is really good and reasonably priced. It's a mix of Italian and Albanian cuisine, which makes for a variety of plates and flavors. The glass of wine I got was not planned, but they were kind enough to give me one. I didn't want to narrow it down to one restaurant, so I asked this other guy for somewhere else to eat, and he said to go to Ghazi. Now, Ghazi might be the most famous restaurant in Kavai. It is named after the restaurant owner who decided to include a modern touch of architecture and design into his place. They focus on seafood dishes with a very reasonable prices. It's a nice little restaurant tucked away near the center of town, which makes it very easy to get to. But sometimes you're in a rush and looking for a quick bite to eat. And you can never go wrong with a souflach, especially if you stop by Zikus. He always takes care of you and makes you feel like family. After eating, I remember going to Fusha Aviator the training ground for the local football team, Besa. For many young boys, football's life and captivates their dreams. Football players often are role models, but more interesting is how football can bring people together. Kavai is known for raising many great football players, and it's no surprise that many young boys pursue and train every day, hoping to become a big player. Now I can't just talk about the city. Outside of Kavai, there are many places to go and spend an afternoon. One of them is this artificial lake 10 minutes away outside of Kavai. The locals call it Reservari Econopari, but I saw that Google Maps named it Lake Agonas, probably because it's near Agonas village. Aside from that, it's a beautiful place to go and have a peaceful time. Some other great spot, I remember the Bastova Fortress, a 30 minute drive from the city and I remember it fondly because walking through the fortress was like a walk through history. I was told it was used as a trading post for various countries, especially because it's located near the Adriatic Sea. I did wonder what it was like during that time. Were there ever disagreements amongst the traders? Did any travelers find love here? Was this a place with happy memories?
Vai is only about five kilometers or three miles from the shore of the Adriatic Sea. A light jog, bike ride, or a quick Fergon trip makes it easy to take in the beauty of the sea and relax. There's also the Cheta village. A quick walk towards the hill and you get to see the whole city from the top of it. turn around you get to see this beautiful artificial lake. While you're there, you can also go to Shinaprenta Church. Albania is generally known for its religious tolerance. Although Kavai is predominantly Islamic, people are respectful of others' religious beliefs and people live in harmony. This church is one of the few cult objects in Albania that wasn't destroyed during communism. It has been here for seven centuries and has held up pretty nicely. As the day came to an end, I can remember thinking how there was so much to see and do in town. It's hard to believe I was only there for such a short amount of time. I made my way to the hotel, the only one in the city and already reminiscing for what had so quickly become a memory. But it's a warm feeling to know that such a beautiful place can exist simply in the palm of my hand.